Greetings board members and the Troy community. I just wanted to go over the June board meeting agenda and some of the items. First off, I wanna point out that our meeting will be on Monday the 19th at five o'clock. They're typically at six o'clock. We have quite a few things going on uh, for this meeting and also it's summertime. So the board has decided to meet a little bit earlier. Um, besides the regular items, I'll just jump right down to the administrative reports. We have a few people who have resigned that we're going to miss. Uh, Tracy McCready is a teacher. Nigel, uh, he's been working for us as a classified uh, staff member, has also resigned. We were going to have him be a teacher next year, but he has some other things that he'd like to do. Brooke Sully is moving on to uh, for some family things over to the Flathead region. And Andrea Towery has resigned as a junior and senior high school science teacher. A lot of people we want to recognize, some students and staff members, especially as we wrap up the school year. There's been a lot going on, and we appreciate everyone's help and support. A lot of uh, students stepping up. Um, a big thanks to Paxton Fisher as the student body president. Did a lot of cool things at the very end, well, throughout the year and um, especially towards the end of the year. Really busy at the elementary school and the high school with field trips, uh, different school activities, and just a big thanks to the administration and to the, the staff and students in working through the, all those things. Um, maintenance and transportation, a lot of things as we're wrapping things up and now it's summertime already. We're only a few days into the summer and things are getting uh, torn apart, getting set up for projects and getting classrooms cleaned up and, and getting ready for the next school year. We have two different items on the agenda later on. We'll talk about the wood shop remodel and the metal shop edition. So um, keep those in mind. A few district-wide items. Uh, we did get approved for our variance to accreditation. This is for library standards. You'll remember that we're required to have 1.1 librarians. And so we're not technically required to do this variance. It just makes it so we don't have a little um, a ver uh a little tick on our, our accreditation status. So not a big deal, but it, uh, it's something that we've been doing for several years now. Also just want to remind everyone about the calendar and schedule decision, this timeline with Deborah Silk and the School Board Association. The next listening session will be September 18th, followed by November 6th, that she is going to lead both of those. And then the anticipated date to consider any school calendar changes is going to be on January 8th. Also like to point out with the a family ad campaign that we were partnering with the Unite for Youth on next year. We're going to be focusing on three different areas around brain development, sleep, healthy lifestyle, and relationships. So we're excited about being able to provide some information to our community on those different items. Also, we're partnering with uh, Maggie Anderson and, and the Unite for Youth organization to provide some substance abuse classes for those students that have had disciplinary issues and we're excited about that. You can click on that and see the outline of what that class entails. A couple of exciting things about finances. I don't know how finances can be that exciting, but it is because we are paying off our Troy Activity Center bond this month. Um, we will not be, we, we're, we're completely done after years and years of paying on it. Um, this will have a direct impact on our taxes this coming year because this is something that has cost the taxpayers about $150,000 every year. And so we should be able to see the amount of mills required to operate the schools go down. And so that'll be an interesting calculation as we figure things out in August, but it, it should be going down um, fairly substantially. That's quite a bit of money. And then also our goal is to pay off our performance contract. It could be in 2024. It depends on, on what the district and the board want to do. We even may have enough money to pay it off for this, um, uh, this end of the, with these end of the year funds. So we're, we're actively working with the bank right now to see how much is left. It's about $150,000. Um, and so we may be able to pay a chunk of it off now and then pay the rest of it off in January of 2024 or in uh, July of 2024. Also, we've completed our audit and I encourage everyone to get into this audit report and maybe we will we'll even have some time for uh, Jen Higgins to go over the report. Again, this is from 21-22. There were some items um, that we just need to shore up as far as how we are, are um, uh tracking some funds and, and moving some of them around. But we had uh, many board members on that audit report 
um, and and we're clean. There there hasn't been any problems with uh, money getting uh, lost or embezzled, embezzled or anything like that. It's more of getting in and and just making sure that we code things correctly and that we're we're um, following all the reporting procedures that we need to at the state and the federal level. Some other exciting financial um, information. We did receive the after school program grant. It's called the 21st Century Community Learning Center grant. $85,000 for three years and then $70,000 for years four and five. That's a huge accomplishment. A big thanks to Teresa Curry for doing that. And also, um, I have reported on that we did receive the Montana Advanced Opportunities Grant, but uh, this last legislative session, they actually increased the amount that we're going to be getting. So there's some additional funds there, which is going to be really exciting. And then also another re reminder to, to the board, we have some board training on G uh, sorry July 27th at 1 to 5, and that's going to be in the high school library. So getting back to the agenda, we have uh, several different people we're recommending to hire. Tammy Bragg as a special education teacher. This is replacing uh, Christina Shirtle, who's going to be stepping in as the superintendent next year. Um, Caitlin Glaze as the librarian. This is going to be an emergency licensure, and the district is um, recommending that we provide some tuition support for her. So she has a bachelor's degree. She's going to be working towards an elementary endorsement and then working on towards a library endorsement. And she's excited about that. Also, uh, with uh, Christina Shirtle stepping in into the superintendent position, she has acted as the Title IX coordinator for the past several years. Um, it it uh, is recommended that Nikki Steiker step into that position. And instead of uh, a pay increase or a stipend or anything like that, we want to do a $2,500 tuition reimbursement because she is working towards a, an, uh, an administrative endorsement. And then also Jordan Graves, she has been already hired on as a gear up uh, liaison. We want to increase a little bit more for her to do with these advanced opportunities grants um, that we have, that we have some quite a bit of funding for. Um, you can click there to reach the job description. Also Sandy Willis as the title grant coordinator, she has been doing this for quite a long time, um, over 40 plus years. I won't say the exact amount, but it could be longer than I've been alive, which I'm not young anymore. So uh, some other things we want to recommend Michelle Morton as a classroom aide, uh, Tiana Michael as the high school secretary. And then we have a list of classified staff um, from secretaries, after school, site program coordinator. It's a part-time position to Carmen Arriaga our Spanish teacher. And then we have a list of paraprofessionals. A lot of them, you will see that they are uh, renewals, food service workers, transportation department, and maintenance and custodian. And then we have some proposed extracurricular staff too. Um, some junior high football, basketball, and volleyball. Um, one that's new is Henry Roy's the head baseball coach. We're excited about that. And Jordan Graves also is the head volleyball coach. Uh, she's coached for us many times in the past. So we're excited about having her back in this uh, position as the head position. And then you can read through the other ones there too. Uh, next up is the, an easement agreement with the city of Troy. I've reported on this in the past. This easement agreement is uh, for the elementary school where we have a sidewalk and a parking lot. Um, and, and this would... Uh, just codify that if we ever, if they ever had to dig it up to access the water or anything else that we would be uh, paying for the, the new um, sidewalk and the, the asphalt. So that's what that's about. We are working with their attorney and our attorney to uh, clarify some of the language in there. Um, and I was just heard about that, but I'm going to leave this on the agenda anyway. And, and in case it is all okay. Um, but if we do need to change it, we'll see it back on the agenda. We also have an agreement here with Kayla Rambo uh, as a speech therapist. She will be doing speech remotely. She lives over in Washington, is very experienced, and has done a lot of remote speech and will be coming and doing assessments and keeping in close contact with Nicole Garrison, who's acting as our uh, speech therapist assistant. We have two items of insurance to approve. The Montana Schools Property and Liability Insurance Plan, it's gotten more expensive. You can click through there and you can read through it. Uh, it's probably gone up uh, 
11 to $12,000, which was kind of surprising, um, but it's getting more and more expensive um, like many, many things are. So um, if you have questions about that, let me know. And also the workers' compensation is also going up about $10,000. So uh, there were some calculation errors as they quoted us last year, and then just things have gone up because of um, some, some injuries. And I'm hoping to have our insurance broker here at this meeting, either in person or on Zoom, to answer any questions there. Uh, I told you this is a long agenda, so uh, bear with me. Uh, uh, we finished negotiations, and there's some good recommendations for classified and with certified and with administration. A lot of wording changes in both of the agreements, classified and certified. You can go through and read through them. Um, I will just highlight in the classified the the pay matrix matrix that we're recommending that the base increases to $25, $25 for bus drivers, $20 for assistant maintenance, and et cetera, et cetera. And then there will be an annual increase of 10 cents per year um, uh, instead of have it, having it written all the way out as a pay matrix. And then the following year, it'll be a 15 cent increase per year. And then also for those that work in the after school program, this is funded out of a grant as I talked about in the administrative report. Um, they will receive an additional two hour increase per hour because it is difficult to find people to do that it's in the evening and they have their own their own funding to do that so we're excited about that opportunity with the certified i just want to point out two different items um, but one item before i get to the the pay uh, but again get through there read through these different items because we did spend a lot of time working with the teachers on this the first one is the leave buyout so this would increase the amount that teachers would get when they retire from the school district. Um, they're, instead of getting $85 a day, they would get uh, $150 for annual leave, $200 for business leave. And the reason behind this is that, that we want them to bank all of this together. So if they're here for 20 years, they can bank uh, their 12 days of annual leave every single year and have a big chunk of change at the very end. Um, when they're retiring and and also with their personal business leave it's three four five days that they they accrue every year so the benefits are first for a district it encourages teachers not to use their sick and personal leave that's huge we want teachers in our classrooms we want them um, in front of our students we want them being the ones that are providing the education and not a substitute and so that gives teachers a huge incentive to be at the school. Their incentive comes in is because uh, banking all of this together at the end of their 20, 25, 30 years, it, is, it could be a lot of money. And that amount of money um, gets factored into how much they get in their retirement pension, which could increase their, their monthly take home for their pension quite substantially. And so I think it's a good win-win for the district. It doesn't cost the district that much more because the substitute's $125. And so um, this could be a, a, a big game changer for providing a, a better education for our students and providing a good benefit, a good retirement benefit for our teachers too. And then lastly, in the certified agreement, let me get down to the the pay matrix. Uh, it's very, pretty simple. Um, the teachers and the negotiations committee um, are recommending a 3% increase at the base. So it's going from 31704 to 33971. Um, a 3% increase for next year, 23 to 24 and 24 to 25. Um, and then also for next year, it would add a step 17 down here for columns for the master's column and the master's plus 10. So that would that would also increase um, people's pay um, pretty well too. So if you have questions about those agreements, let me know. We also included administration pay increases. I know we've talked about that in, in the board meeting in the past. This is where the proposed increases are at. And this is what the comparisons are to other districts. And I think what the negotiations committee focuses on uh, has focused on is trying to get the these are our increases up to what the average is. And so I'd just like to note with with some of our administrators, they're not taking insurance, which uh, amounts to be well uh, about over twelve thousand dollars. So 
we still have some work to do to get them up to the average pay. The next is the transportation resolution. This is something that the board looks at every June. Uh, it has not changed. These are the same routes that we do every year um, and how many miles they are. So this resolution will then be taken to the transportation committee at the, at the county level. Um, they have a committee there that has to approve that too. It's basically the superintendents of board members that get together and make sure that all the routes are appropriate and um, not extensive. Next up in June, we also focus on uh, doing a multi-fund uh, uh, fund transfer. And so this allows us, if we have some leftover funds, to transfer this into a, what we call an interlocal cooperative fund. The district is made up of two different districts. Um, we are a K-8 district and a 9-12 district, and we've created an interlocal agreement that allows us to take funds at the end of the year, put it into that, that, uh, that budget item, and then we can slowly utilize it out. Years ago, before we had this interlocal agreement, or before the state allowed or created interlocal agreements, we'd have to spend, spend, spend any money that we had left over. And so this allows us to be a lot more fiscally responsible with the funds that we have. Uh, and then this is probably the biggest part of the agenda is the policies. There are a lot of policies. Um, many of these policies, all the policies are from uh, changes based upon the legislative se session. So get in there. Uh, there. There's a summary that we've provided for each one of the policies. And then also you can see the red line for each one of the policies too. Some of them are just really simple. There's nothing a huge change to it, just some clarification or some minor word wording changes uh, is all. Um, so I'd encourage you to get in and look at some of those and, and ask if you have any questions. And then handbooks. So there are changes in the handbooks. In the coach's handbook, there's no changes, but the board reviews and approves the handbooks every year. So there are no recommended changes in the coach's handbook, the extracurricular handbook, there are going to be changes in these other three handbooks based upon the policy changes that are taking place above in the agenda. And so there are just some small changes in the extracurricular handbook. One that I would like to note, and it, it actually is a policy too, is we're recommending that the board uh, approve uh, the 365-day, 24-hour-a-day um, training rules that they be in fact only for uh, major violations. So as you scroll down there, it's taken a little bit for my computer to load it. Um, but that that's one of the big changes. And the rest of them are some, some nickel and dime uh, policy changes. Um, but there's some other things in there too to kind of clean things up and just shorten it a little bit. Same with the staff handbook. Um, some things that you'll see in the policies that you'll also see here. Um, again, make sure that you go through the policies, go through the red line areas, and let me know if you do have any questions. You'll see most of the changes in the student handbook. And again, all these handbooks were reviewed by, our coaches had some feedback and input for the extracurricular handbook. Um, our administration had, um, uh, had some time to review and, and give feedback for the staff handbook too. But most of it is because of these, these policy changes above. Uh, some other items is the, some designs that we have. And so this is the next design, the, the, I think the last iteration after we discussed of what, what we want the high school to look like when we do a remodel. Again, this, this front retaining wall is leaning over. And so we're gonna have to change that out anyway. So the big change is to um, put change the retaining wall out of course, and then put a sidewalk down to the highway. So visitors can park out on the highway here. Um, we do a retaining wall all along 2nd Street and put a commons area here on this um, this side of the cafeteria side of the high school. So look could look really cool. We've been working with some architects and some engineers on this. Uh, the next thing is, let me get to the wood shop. Wood shop and the metal shop remodel. So um, the wood shop, just a reminder, is in the, the old bus barn. And so working with uh, the wood, uh, Mr. Rogers and in figuring out how we want it designed and organized. This is what our architects and our engineers have come up with. Um, the, one of the big things that we're working on is the roof to make sure that it does not leak. So we have some work to do there. Let me jump to the metal shop. You'll remember that we are recommending an addition to it 
for the forgery class, uh, not forging, forging class. Uh, anyway, so this would be an open air at the very top. Um, and it's, it's uh, I think it's gonna be really nice for that, that uh, uh, forging class. And then we have a few items in our work session. We wanna talk about staff housing, still an issue that we're dealing with. We could talk about the remodel, the concession stand again, or we could talk about other type of staff housing or partnering with someone in the community. Uh, the next thing we wanted to talk about is the district history preservation. If you click on this link, you'll see all the old yearbooks. A huge thank you to Family Search for producing those, um, for scanning all those yearbooks. And then also we wanted to talk about possibly putting up some history in the activity center, putting up some displays. There's been a lot of discussion and, and trying to figure out what we want to do there because we put up some new Consen signs to uh, memorialize John Consen as of the John, Son John Consen court. We put up a biography. So we want to have a discussion there. The 10 year plan, you've seen this before. It outlines when we do what as far as curriculum review, trustee elections, buildings, bus replacement, uniform replacement. That's what probably this document gets used most for. So want to make sure everything is, is squared away on that as far as planning, and then our strategic plan for the next uh, few years until 2025. And then with a new superintendent coming on, I want to make sure that uh, we have the appropriate evaluation procedure and process. The board has talked about this the past a few months. Um, there's a committee that's been assigned to do that, and so hopefully you'll come up with some good ideas, and so uh, Christina will be able to hit the ground running. And then we'll talk about any summer maintenance plans if people have questions. And then that's it. And hopefully we can get through it. Again, if you have questions, um, please come and ask me beforehand. I'd be happy to go through any of these items to uh, clear up anything um, and help out in any way. And again, I know it's a long, long agenda. I've been trying to get everything as situated as possible to help with the transition, make sure that the transition is smooth to Christina and making sure that the district uh, doesn't skip a beat and I'm sure and confident that it will be. So we've been trying to trying to get as much done um, just in June, uh, getting most of our summer work done um, just in June. So, so Christina will be able to start off on a strong foot um, starting in July. And it's been a pleasure these last 13 years. If you stuck around this whole video, um, and I appreciate everything that everyone has done, and this is, it can kind of be a, uh, a rough time for me as, as this is the last board meeting. I think I've been to about 150 board meetings in Troy over my tenure uh, as principal and then superintendent. So um, thank you again, and I'll look forward to seeing everyone at this board meeting.